Hi, what did you perhaps as a kid play around with car engines or lawnmower engines, hedge trimmers, bicycles, and pull them apart? <laughs> I used to take clocks, old clocks, I used to love pulling them apart and learning how they worked. Well, I decided I want to know a bit more about shoes. As you know, I've been making some shoe lasts and I thought, right, I will get an old pair of shoes and pull them apart. So what I got was some gents brogues, a uh, very traditional sort of shoe. These I paid four pounds for, <laughs> and they're quite nice quality shoes. They're by Loke, so they're good, good of their type. Um, seeing the end of their days really, because the heels have gone, the sole is gapping and gone, and some of the seams are going. So they're very much on their last legs. You could refer them. Um, I know you could say, well, it's a bit sort of naughty to pull a pair of shoes apart just to see how they're made. But to be honest, one could end up using up lots of leather material, trying to make a shoe and not make it very well. So I feel sharing this with you, at least you also are getting the benefit of seeing how it's being made. The other thing I want to do is these are brogues. So they've got this nice pierced decoration. I'll do a video on how you can do that and also the gimping, the little serrated edges as well, it's quite nice. But I'll bring the camera over on the bench and show you a bit more of where I've been pulling one of these apart and you can see what it's like inside. Well it really helps to have a pair of shoes to look at because immediately you can look at the side profile and you can start to see how tall the heel is for heel lift. So I mean in this case it's about 20 millimetres there, the heel lift. You can look at things like the toe lift which is actually quite a lot. It's probably getting on for about 30 millimetres of toe lift there. And you can start to see the shape of the shoe very much and this really has helped me with my last making. So you can see it goes in at the waist, you see it comes out, you get an idea of the kind of toe shape. You notice little details like for the shoe to keep on your foot you've got to have that back coming in a bit. If you didn't the shoe would be really uncomfortable it would constantly feel like it was falling off your foot. So that curving in at the top is quite important. This one is what's called an Oxford shoe the way the lacing's done here into this like that. You could get a derby which is where you have two flaps coming on the sides which are sewn down. It's the other sort of main type. It's quite nice to be able to see the decoration <coughs> for the broguing and the gimping and to see the spacing for that. So I'll, I'll do a separate video as I say on, the, on that. Now I have been pulling this one apart. The reason it's covered at the moment in masking tape is I was actually just testing out my shoe lasts uh, to see if they were going to fit in broad terms to make this kind of shoe and I concluded they were a bit gappy actually so I have since taken some more off of my shoe lasts. So again quite useful to get a sense of scale with that. But it's when you start to pull it apart a few things struck me which I'll just sort of cover now because I think it's quite sort of instructive really. Let's get these bits of masking tape off. The first thing that struck me is the main body lever is actually quite thin and I'll put a thickness gauge on it just to tell you. I found this helpful because I mean it's strong lever you can really pull it and it feels tough. It's obviously a form of nice calf lever but it's thickness wise whoops it's about one and a half millimeters. Well that's quite useful intelligence if you're making your own shoes because you, you can see here a manufacturer has used one and a half millimetre, it's not too thick. They have then backed it up with a lining and the shoe lining again looks like an ordinary russet calf type leather and it's been skived so I need to get into the body of it so it's been thinned at its edges, is a millimetre thick. So you've got a lining that's a millimetre thick and an outer that's one and a half millimetres thick. 
and that's quite useful to know. Again, quite interesting. They have obviously with the upper, they have built it so that they've sewn the components together and the seams obviously overlap, but there's nothing otherwise lower down. It's really what you'd expect, but it's interesting to see if that's how they do do it. Same here, you can see there's the lining underneath, but then it's all sewn down. Notice little details like the lining, it's been um, thinned off on its edges and in places it's been like rounded over a little bit just to make it look or blend in a bit more. I think they've actually just dyed that top edge but it makes it blend into the outer quite nicely which I thought was quite a little interesting detail. The main body of the shoe they have skived it all around at the top and then they've done a little fold which is only about three four millimeters and then sewn it all down but again it very much neatens that top edge and makes it look visually good when you look in the shoe so that skiving on the outer edge and folding over seems quite important quite good to see the stiffener that's been used in both the heel and in the toe and they've used some sort of um, synthetic material here which is molded round to give you a stiffener so that the heel doesn't collapse if you sort of accidentally tread on it when you're putting your shoes on and ditto with the toe it has what they call a toe puff so again there is a stiffener in the toe can't really show you but it's a similar sort of idea it's a synthetic material that's been put in there to give that toe a bit of body now one can use calf leather something like a five ounce calf leather will work quite well for doing both the toe and the heel so that's a way of strengthening those components and keeping them looking nice Other little things you begin to notice, quite a nice little detail on the top of the tongue where they've got this serrated edge, it's called gimping, but that's quite nicely done. I have found a technique for doing that, it took a bit of research, but I'll share that in another film. Um, then came to look at the sole of this shoe, and this is a Goodyear welted shoe. So if it wasn't for the rubber sole and the rubber heel, you'd be able to see with this rubber sole taken off, you'd be able to see the stitching lines. You can see them here in the gap and the stitches are nicely recessed in. Slightly different when they do it by machine to how you do it if you're doing it by hand. But if I open up the bottom of the shoe here, you can see you've got your welt, which is sewn to the upper and then separately sewn to the sole and that's obviously been done with a machine uh, and rather accurately and rather nicely one can replicate but actually improve on that if one does it by hand which is what i'll be doing these shoes have stiffeners underneath the arch they're called shanks sometimes they're metal sometimes plastic this one's got a couple of wooden shanks so actually i don't see why i can't reuse those i'll check that they aren't distorted but I think I can use them in the pair of shoes that I make and at least then I'm recycling some of his shoe. So there you are, that's the, the wooden shank which goes back there. This is all cork infill and I'll need to, when I make some shoes, be using uh, cork infill to level everything off. So they've used crumbled up cork with glue to level everything and it's quite nice again to see it and see how they're doing it. The sole underneath that rubber is actually a very hard sole leather so you can get um, special leather with a like a hardness if you have a one to six scale it's six hardness maximum hardness leather and you really can't touch that very easily so good for soles you can see how the heel has been built up this I think has been nailed because on the inside there are rows of nails. I don't think it's been wooden pegged but people often certainly used to and I will be using little wooden pegs 
to build up that heel and to keep the heel nicely in position. But it's great to have this as a reference piece. I'll be able to look back at this shoe, see how it's been constructed and it will remind me of little aspects to look out for and little details like the size. The, the sewing thread, UK wise, I'd say that was something like an NM60. It's a very fine thread on there. Uh, very fine stitch and you can begin to look at the stitch length. It's like I'm guessing about one and a half millimetres per stitch. So it's a fine stitching all going around but you can replicate some of these details. The eyelets um, don't show on the outside which is quite nice. I'll pull those apart later and see exactly how they've done that. But it's again quite a nice little detail. So there you are. <laughs> someone's old shoe. Uh, I'll be probably stripping this down even more because you could, if you wanted to, use these all as pattern pieces. But these are in fact in my size so it will probably be quite useful for me to strip it down and it will be another cross check that I'm getting the right size of patterning. Quite hard to pull all of this apart. You realise how much glue they use at every stage and how, for example, the lining has all been glued to the outer. And it's a bit like applying woodwork. You're giving yourself a good bit of strength. So there you have it. A pair of old shoes which are going to get studied even more now. But it's not a bad way. If you can pick up an old pair which really are at the end of their life and pull them apart, you will learn a lot. If you get them from a charity shop, at least the money's going to a good charitable cause, which is nice. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. A little look at some shoes. <laughs> Hopefully one of these days I'll be showing you a video with some nicely made shoes that I will be doing. That would be another story. Anyway, I hope you found that quite interesting. Uh, certainly instructive to me, I find, with anything. If you want to know how it's made, it's not a bad idea to reverse engineer it and pull it apart and you learn little things looking more closely and yeah, it's the same with a leather briefcase or anything else not a bad idea in leather work or in fact in woodwork or metal work you can work out how things are done anyway thanks for watching the video please subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you in the next one <laughs> bye bye then